Right, good morning. You join me on a very blustery uh, St. John's on the linear complex. And today we're gonna to be talking about zigs and exactly how I fish my zigs, uh, the baits I use, what depths I change to. Everything you need to know about zig fishing is gonna be in this segment. So yeah, like I say, it's a very blustery day. And these are the days that are really, really good for the zigs. You know, everyone associates zig fishing with bright sunny days and high pressure. You know, the pressure is low at the minute. It's probably at about a thousand. We've got big southwesterly wind. These gravel pit carp, you know, they know when that bottom's being stirred up and they really get on the munch. So when it's good for the zig on the bottom, the zigs come in play as well. Uh, we've got a few more variables, depths, colours. So yeah, we've got a lot to try, a lot to change to find out exactly what the, where the carp are and what colour they want today. So yeah, that's going to be my job, roving zigs around, keeping my eyes bang on the water at all times and uh, figuring out what's going on. So yeah, it's going to be a good one. Right, lead set up for zigs. It couldn't be any simpler. You know? There's no lead core, there's no tubing, there's no leaders. It is literally direct main line, straight through to your swivel. I've got a tail rubber, a lead clip, and a quick change swivel. Just so when I'm changing my depths, it's a lot easier. Swivel, get that clicked in there. I've got a three and a half ounce distance lead on, just because it's blustery and I want to get out there. I do like using inline lead as well. When you're playing the fish on inline lead, you don't get this happening. As the fish sort of shake its head, the lead moves around, you can get the hook pull, but because of the wind today and I'm fishing at sort of 100 yards, distance lead will definitely help me get out there. And as you can see here, I've got quite an extended loop on there, and that's solely because when I get my anti-tangle sleeve in place and it goes into the swivel, I've then got like an extra anti-tangle bit there. It's like a doubled up bit of the, bit of the uh, zig line. Again, just helps with the anti-tangle purposes. Um, right, I've got at the minute, it's about four and a half, five foot, this one, of 12 pound zig line, down to a size eight mixer hook. A little bit of silicon, just to kick it out at the right angle. And I like to fish it with a supple hair. Gives that bait a nice bit of sort of natural movement in the water column, and that's how I fish. Uh, again, as well, when you're getting multiple takes on zigs, you'll generally find that this part of the, this part of the line here, if you had a mono straight through, it kinks, and you've got to constantly change your zigs. With a supple hair, you know, if the, if the hook's sharp, that can go straight back out there and I'm getting a few extra bites for the day. A depth of zig as well, it's really important. I've probably got about 10, 11 foot out there and that, the fish at the minute, they could be anywhere in the water column from two foot up all the way up to just under the surface. Uh, so it's very important that I'm meeting them fish with the right depths. So I'm gonna be changing them a lot, working out where they are and when you do work it out, it can get frantic. So hopefully, We'll do that. I'll get this out there and I'll go into depth about hook bait choice as well. So let's get this wrapped up and out there. Right, I've just bought all the rods in and made some minor adjustments, but that is all about zig fishing. You know, you've got to be constantly active, changing depths, changing colours. And that's exactly what I've done. Uh, I started off on a four, a six, and an eight foot zig. I brought two down to three foot, and I've kept one on six foot. I've also changed some hook baits as well. And I started off with the ziggers, and they're brilliant, but they are also very small. And in the summer months and, and sort of late spring, that's perfect. But they're just waking up from their winter now, and uh, as we know, their eyesight is not as good in the winter, so I want something a bit more sort of in their face. And you can get away with a lot more, you know? It's like surf fishing in the summer. When you first start it, you can get away with big blatant hook baits, but as it progresses and they get caught a few times, you've really got to scale down to sort of nick bites. So you can sort of play, start playing around with bigger hook baits. Pop-ups, 12 mil pop-ups, absolutely perfect. I've got loads of variant colours, and that's what it's about. Pinks, orange, yellows, whites, and I'll be changing them throughout the day to see if I can get that bite. And once I get one bite and I find that depth, I'm sure there'll be a few more as well. So along with pop-ups and colours, smell plays a big part in it as well and that's where the super sweet liquid comes into its own as well this stuff is intensely sweet you put it on your tongue and it really gives you a little kick um, again absolutely perfect when it's up in the water column it sort of just homes them in into that hook bait and definitely gets you a few more bites as well so yep i'll be getting this on the pop-ups on the ziggers and get them out there
Right, so when zig fishing, it's really important to have a super tight line and direct contact with your lead. A lot of your sort of bites are going to be very small little lifts and sort of two or three inch drop backs. It's really important that I've got a tight line and a sensitive alarm. Delcoms are absolutely perfect for this. They're super sensitive and when I get a pick up, I know exactly what's going on. So hopefully with me keep changing the depths and stuff, these bobbins will soon be dancing. It's not just single hook bait zig fishing that works really well as well. You know, spot and over zigs, a nice cloudy mix can work fantastic, but not so much at this particular venue at this particular time of the year. You know, if you want to start spotting over zigs, which can, like I say, can be very, very effectively, you've got to sort of pick the venue with the right stock at the right time of the year as well. You know, you basically want to get them competing up in the layers, and we're not really going to get that on a cold February's day. Uh, so yeah, pick your venue, you want quite a high stock volume of carp. You want shoalfish as well, you know, you want to get them competing and jumping on the hook. So like I say, single hook baits today is enough to sort of get bites. And I think actually spotting over zigs would probably sort of hinder our chances of a few bites as well. So yeah, pick and choose your waters and pick and choose your times of year as well. Right, it won't be long until it's dark, and that's when a lot of people take the zigs off. But if you're in the know, you will know that zigs at night can be absolutely devastating, especially in sort of two to three hours either side of first light. Now we've also got a really good sort of moon phase at the minute, it's pretty much a full moon. So that's going to silhouette them zigs against that surface layer, absolutely perfect. And a lot of big fish get caught on big moons and on zigs as well, so I'm definitely going to stick to them. Joe's got a shoot, he's only here for the day, so if I get anything during the night, I will do some self-take footage, video footage as well, and you'll get to see the zigs in all their glory. Go on, girl. So fingers crossed, we don't get one in the next few hours, early hours of the morning, they will still be rocking, and so will I. Yeah.